Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have me, sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. This is Eat and Drink with Ali Hassan and Marco Timpano. The podcast where back of house Ali and front of house Marco talk food and drink. Heads up. These two spent decades in restaurants, so some mature content and language is bound to come up. Get ready for Eat and Drink. Forks up. Like a turducken. Like a turducken. And I think that's the best way to start uh, today's episode. This is a, a turducken in the studio right now. It certainly is. Three, three in a studio. Uh, I'm Marco Timpano. You are the primo to my secondi, if we can use a, a, a reference from Big Night, yes, which we'll be talking sure. about later today. That's right. I'm Ali Hassan, and we've got a, a special guest here today. Our first special guest. Our ever. first special I'm guest. so thrilled. So great. I'm very honored, actually. Genuinely very honored. Do you want to say his name? Bill Antonio. Good for you, oh, Ali. You hey, go. I remember stuff. That's a lifetime first. <laughs> we massacred that name last week. So okay. I don't know if we on a we on that one. That was you single-handedly. Uh, all right, I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm no, I'll be enough. on your ship. My oh, sister and I love ship. all the various ways that people say our names, and we've sort of made collections over time of which are our favorites. Yeah. The Royal Conservatory always thought our name was Antoniov. We always really enjoyed that. Oh, great! It made us a bit Russian. Yeah, of you know, course, it was exciting. Oh, yeah. I think the sight of three vowels. I think it's a trip. Out. trip yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Is that what it's called? I think three vowels in a row. People, I, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know even my son with the word beautiful, and he's a good reader at yeah. age seven. But with words like that, beauty or whatever, you can just I'm always see. just surprised because I don't have like a super long Greek name. I'm not yeah. like a Papadopoulos. Yeah, you were merciful. But, Your family you know, was merciful. That's all right. And still. <laughs> that's and still. That was the point. That was the intention. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, for our listeners, I want to mention that Bill has two podcasts as well. Uh, Bad Game Movies. Yeah. And my criterions, which I'm a fan of both those podcasts. And uh, as a result, you're like, I want to be on your show talking about film, move, film, food in movies. Figure it out, man. We it was guess. just my way of figuring out a way to get on this show. I was like, all right, talk about <laughs> food movies and then I can be on. There's no one I know who would be better suited <laughs> to talk about food in film than you, Bill. Thank so, you. Right. And I'm if you're listening and you're like, I would be better suited, then write to us and we'll have you on right after. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, and then watch five movies in a week yeah. <laughs> because you made the mistake of sending these guys a huge long list and they're but, like, let's do them all. But it's, not, it's by no means a mistake. Now, I made some mistakes today by leaving things till the end and not being able to find the movies online. But besides that, it's just a joy to watch movies with uh, the deal with food. I, well, I, I hope I picked good ones. So yeah. I thought you picked great ones. Okay. But to start off, the films that you had selected were all food based, and I said we need a food, a film that has cocktails in it. So I suggested we watch a horrible film from I believe eighty eight called Cocktail with Tom Cruise, directed by Roger Donaldson, who also did Species and The November Man. Wow. Okay, so yeah. he's he's made up for his <laughs> earlier mistakes. Nah, never mind. We don't have to also judge it shot in Toronto. Cocktail? Yeah. Yes, most of it's shot in what? Toronto. My friend Some Jack beach. Newman plays the English professor oh, the first really? time he goes to class. Yeah. Oh, there. Shot out. But yeah. wasn't it also on a beach afterwards? Like part of They cocktail? shot in Jamaica. They also shot location stuff in New York, but most of it's shot in Toronto. That club that they go work at, the uh the locked the the cell block. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, yeah, the yeah. Don Jail. Oh, that's oh. hilarious. Yeah. Marco, I want to tell you that every time I see you shake a shaker, yeah. I still think Tom Cruise in my head. That's oh, the well, impact that that movie had on me. The main the main thing I thought about when watching this movie again, which I fuck everyone who made me watch this movie again, which but, is me, yeah. which is me, because uh, it's awful. But also you, this entire so movie, you, called you everyone. I, I know. I'm I, while you're doing this, I'm gonna make the cocktail. So you're gonna. Tell I was us really hoping you were gonna make us a red eye, actually. No, in in, in, in the spirit of this movie, the, I'm actually the making, hangover cure. I'm making a dingling. Okay, which was mentioned in this film, and okay. I'll let you pick up where you just left off. Right, no worries, but because we had done a red eye type drink last week. This week I was like, I'm gonna pick a cocktail from a cocktail that they talk about that I've never heard, which is the dingling. Wait till you see what he stirs it with. Huh? No? What no. is in Marco's mouth oh, is man. the question. <laughs> you might remember in the film Tom Cruise. I just got that now. Um, Tom Cruise stands up and he does this poem about being the world's yes. last barman. Poem. Poems by bartenders. Yes. What is this world yeah. that this movie takes oh, place yeah, in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He mentions the dingling, and they mention the dingling a few times. And I'm like, I've never heard of this drink. So I had to look it up. And there was one or two recipes, and then there was a few recipes that had nothing to do with 
what I believe the dingling in the film they're referring to. Because back in the 80s, this horrible beverage, this horrible liqueur was very popular. What are you holding popular. up? Tell us what it, it is. It is peach schnapps. Yes. We're all going to vomit yes. in this studio today. I mentioned to Bill he does not have to drink this particular drink because I'm going to be making another film cocktail in okay. just a all moment. Right. So all you right. can pass, but Ali and myself I'll try cannot. It all all right, care. great. Committed well, to our art. The significant thing about the movie Cocktail okay. is that it proved... Uh, that Tom Cruise at the time was the most popular movie star in the world because that movie was on the top 10 hits of the year. And it is a movie that he only did because Rain Man was delayed by six months and he had the time. And this was a great so offer was for him. So it after Top Gun. And after, after Top Gun. Top Gun is 86. So obviously a risky business, Top Gun. Uh, I don't think, th- I don't remember if he had a movie in 87. So okay. I think he had these two in 88. But his, and people went in droves to see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because of Top Gun, they were like, we are going to go see Cocktail. Whatever he was in. And Tom Cruise didn't have a bomb until like 20 years later. He His movies were always, he's always been very popular and I love him. He's a great movie star. Um, but I think Cocktail and Legend are probably rivals for the worst Tom Cruise movies out there. Oh, one ounce peach schnapps. <laughs> the other thing that I love it. about no, Cocktail one ounce is that vodka. the Cocktail is pure Toronto Health Code violations. Nothing that they would that they do in that movie would be allowed That's in funny. any bar in this city. Swinging those bottles, as amazing as it is, yeah. someone would definitely come in and tell you no, yellow pass until you stop doing right, that. Right, right, right. And I would just like to say, as someone who worked in uh, Many bars, many restaurants. <laughs> I never worked with a bartender who swung booze like that because the problem with that, uh, the intrinsic problem, is if you drop that bottle of booze, that's forty bucks down the drain. Yeah, and it's also an hour of cleanup as Which, well. Yeah, you're in a busy 40 bar. Bucks. It's forty bucks times whatever you're charging for an hour. Yes, of course. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. And so no manager is going to let you do that kind of garbage unless you're somewhere where booze is cheap. And those tricks impress people. Sure. In cities like Toronto, Chicago, New York, Los Angeles, it's not going to fly. The, I is, don't know about that. Some of these tourist trap bars, you got to have places that are they're like they love that stuff. Like like you're talking about tourist trap bars in, in New in, York. In, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but like where New Yorkers go to drink. If you went to a bar. If, if my local started okay. doing that, I'd be like, I'm looking for a new local. <laughs> you are no longer. But I remember when the movie came out, everyone thought it was so cool. All of the, sure. the bottle swinging was so cool. And Tom Cruise studied with an expert to learn how to do it. Right. Um, and, uh, and then, of course, the other thing you remember, everyone remembers about Cocktail, is that you couldn't get away from that damn Kokomo song right, yep. right, right, for right. years, including it being featured on an episode of Full House. <laughs> <laughs> Where the Beach Boys sang it when the when the Full House cast went to like Florida or something on a trip I can't remember where, um, but yeah, it is all shot in Toronto. Lisa Repo Martel is the customer at the diner who's bugging Elizabeth Shue. And who is that? Who she's an actress. She's a Toronto actress. She works at the coal mine. She was in the English Patient as well. Oh wow! Um, so yeah, it's and his um, Elizabeth Shue's swanky parents' apartment. Yeah, that's Casa Loma. I thought it was. And, I her, thought it was uh, and their building's lobby is actually the Canada Life building. There you go. Yeah. Uh, four ounces of lemon lime soda. I'm using Sprite. I'm going to shake this. Continue to talk. Sure. You sure about that? Oh, shit. I probably shouldn't. Oh, I shouldn't. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck, I shouldn't shake it. Okay. Uh, I should have stirred it. It's okay. It's we okay. have a situation <laughs> on our hands. There's always a situation. There's always a situation. Uh, talk about Tom Cruise. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's all good. It's all good. But I'll tell you this, Bill. What I like I, is that you said, I sh- are you sure about that? Yeah. I should have thought. Anyways. I just, I sent you knew, something. You knew, and I didn't even you know knew, what you exactly. Knew. But I it's, sense it's all good. It's good. Don't shake a drink that has fizzy, fizzy. We've all learned this together. Now, Listen. why Marco needs to learn this now at this stage know. of his right. career, I'm not well, sure. I'm but so here. happy to to let you try this. I'll put some ice in it. So just just. Uh, Is it named after the Chuck Berry song? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Nobody. It's nobody. So I couldn't snappy. get a historical reference to this. Do you want ice in yours? Because I, mean, I have yeah. some ice. Yeah. Yeah. It's I not going to make it any this. better. So it's one ounce so peach schnapps. On the nose. Yeah. It's so schnappy. One one ounce peach schnapps. One I ounce. Can't, I can't tell you how excited I am that I'm in studio doing this show live and seeing <laughs> seeing what what how the sausage is made. All right. So my guests and Ali is going to be drinking. Our guests, I should say, are drinking the dingling right now. And I'd like your impressions on this. My drink. impression is the word diabetes comes to mind. Absolutely. This is a pure 80s cocktail. It's too sweet. Um, the the alcohol part is like the wrong side of bitter. Like it's it's very 80s. Oh, it's so horrible. It's I need so I need horrible. to big tease my hair, put on some <laughs> shoulder pads, put a big bow at the back of my dress. Oh, this, this is such a horrible drink. Yeah. I don't think I've had a yeah. drink like this so horrible since 88 for yeah. sure. This is... 
I can feel Reaganomics destroying the third world with this dream. It's really, I'm is. having bad flashbacks to bad times in my life as well. It's like a, whatever. That's what we call the 80s, Sex Ollie. on the Beach, Malibu Surprise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's yeah. all those and, and then some sugar yeah. added to those. Oh, it's yeah. terrible. Yeah. yeah. It's terrible. Yeah. yeah. Much like the film Cocktail, yeah. the drink that I made. <laughs> I will say this is not as terrible as Tom Cruise spouting poetry at the top of a bar. As if anybody wants to interrupt their night of drinking, listening to the bartender do rhymes for his <laughs> pregnant wife. I have the poem here. Oh, great. But I won't thank read God. it. No, because okay. also thank Just God, because yes. it's just, that drink is horrible. It's pretty drag. Yeah. yeah. All right. So stop drinking that because I'm going to bring a drink that's going to make everything better. Okay? <laughs> All right. So just stop for a minute. Drop well, sure. I've never, seen a, I've never seen a bartender swing bottles around to that okay. level where they have, I like, have. choreographed routines. I have, and I want to What bars where. are you going to? <laughs> was it just online? Was I watching some bartending no, championships? No, I think you've been to the... And these I are the bar, these too. are the, these. Your dingling is probably the drink My. of choice. <laughs> there you go. My dingling gets to a lot of bars, so, yeah. It's time to get that horrible taste out of our mouths. Um, and so I'm, I've brought another film cocktail that I think we'll all like. Okay. So perhaps one of the quintu- you better be right, Tim. I'm going to try to turn this <laughs> on its head. Now, one of the quintessential lines that people remember from films is, "I'll have a martini shaken, not stirred." Mm-hmm. Anyone able to tell me where that's from? Come on, Come Marco. On. What, are we, what are we? What are we? This a couple of child's cavemen? play here. <laughs> You've never met a bigger James Bond fan than me. Are you like, a James I Bond? I am an obsessed fan? James Bond. Your fan. Your favorite is who? Uh, Sean, of course. Okay. Yeah, See, absolutely. that's the way I Sex Roger on Moore. Legs. I know. We said, you said this Yeah, because the when you grew up. I only love Roger Moore because those are the ones that were on TV all the time when I was a kid, mm-hmm. and it was the only time my dad let me, t- you know, single tier, only time my dad let me stay up late. So I associate all those ones with watching them with my dad as a kid, which I'm sure I'll tell everyone when he's dead. Sure. But, um, uh, but Sean, uh, Sean's are also the best movies. I like those movies the For most. For your and, eyes only. That's all I have to say. The Greek one. Good the for Greek you. The Greek one. I yeah. love That's that That's because you can't tell how bad his Greek is. <laughs> oh, <but her laughs> and love... the fact that he says, uh, you're welcome instead of thank you at one point. And I'm like, <laughs> come on. No one on the set was like, uh, Roger. Um, yeah, but one Greek insulted Her yeah. lines were dubbed, right? The... Melina's? Yeah. Uh, no, no. She was saying, I think she was saying her own lines. Oh, but really? she just wasn't sp- pronouncing them properly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, in tribute to that. And mm. I'm so glad that you're a huge fan. I do love that song, though. Sheena Easton. Sheena Easton. Whatever yeah. happened after she... I feel like whoever records a James Bond theme... Their, their careers career, go south? Yeah. Is that right? I, I think it's also because they choose a lot of people who Not are Grace famous Jones. outside of America. A lot of their, fa- their singers for their songs are like British or European. So they go on there. They just I don't see. necessarily have as many hits here. Grace Jones never sang a, a Bond song. No, she didn't. She was what? in a Bond. She, she was, was in a Bond. Bond. She's a Bond so girl. I'm so sorry. She the was only a, one that Roger Moore didn't like. Oh, really? Yeah. He didn't like her. Oh, no. Yeah. Like well, Offset. Yeah. Didn't care for her. Yeah. Wow. Oh, her. okay. All right, well, let's see Speaking if you of like... of the sausage is made. I didn't need that information. <laughs> let's see if you like this drink. Now, I need to clear the air with regards to this drink. Because everyone thinks uh, the James Bond is asking for a martini shaken, not, not stirred. And there's a problem with that. Because when you say a martini, a martini is a gin martini. That's right. When you say a vodka martini, that's a different martini altogether. Yeah. And but he, he wants a gin martini, no. doesn't he? No. Oh, I thought he was. No. I thought he was of a certain British class where mm. it would be gin first over. Vermouth. And it's called a martini because you mix gin with martini Rossi, right? It's Isn't a, that, yeah, with, with vermouth, with dry vermouth. Yeah. Yes, and classically you would use uh, martini, yeah. so so that's where it gets its name. But in Ian Fleming's book that the movies are based on, Casino Royale, Bond says a dry martini, one. In a deep champagne goblet. That's a line from the book. And then the bartender says, We oui, monsieur. So tacky. Just a champagne moment. Goblet. He says. Yeah. Tacky. Or just cooler. a moment is yeah. tacky. <laughs> Wait, I have more. <laughs> My order is not complete yet. Three measures of Gordon's, which is a gin, mm-hmm. one of vodka, half a measure of Lillet. Shake it very well until it's ice cold. Then add a large, thin slice of lemon peel. And that, my friends, is a Vesper martini, which is what he ordered. And Fleming actually invented the drink or, or 
you know, created or the drink. Probably just drank it all day with Noel Coward. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. And it's named after one of the Bond villains, yes. Vesper. Uh, the woman. The woman. His, the, his first love, Vesper Lynn. Who is a double agent, right? If yes, I'm not mistaken. Not a villain, though. Let's not. Double you know, agent, let's sorry. Let's keep it under control here. Mark. Oh, wait a minute. Isn't a double agent. Taking liberties. Isn't double agent. Yeah, but she it's... betrays him. She's not actually the villain in the story. But, okay, you know, I'm just I'm speaking up for the ladies here because they're not here to defend themselves. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Bond and... girls are forever. Hashtag. No, yeah. I'm always made to seem like a horrible person on this show <laughs> by our guests, by off you. Show. And off the show. But Come it's on, also, man. it's isn't it? <laughs> Isn't it shaken, not stirred, because stirring bruises the vodka or bruises the gin? That's right. Okay. You don't want to shake a gin martini because it bruises the um, gin. The complexities, the flavors, the delicate balance of the aromatics in the gin should not be shaken. Whereas any mart- uh, vodka-based martini, whether it be a chocolate martini or whatever, you can shake. Mm-hmm. Now, this particular martini, the Vesper, has both vodka and gin in it. Right. And thus... It can be shaken. I'm very excited about so this. I now, see Lele here. Yeah, we're going to use Lele. So we're going to use a half ounce of vodka. So I will make an ounce of vodka because there's. I'm going to make two. Hmm. Um, so an ounce of vodka. At one point, can we get to how stupid an invention the martini glass is? You ever tried to walk Not very a practical, but the, the most beautiful glass in the Absolutely. world. Absolutely. Yeah. But only and a rarity now a because bar. most bars will not serve you in this glass because no. they break so easily. Oh, yeah. So they usually serve you in a martini shaped uh, goblet, basically, where it's like it's this without the stem. That's usually how you Seen get a martini that? now. Seen it's that? very rare. Yeah, Unless you go to a dedicated martini bar, yeah. you're rare, you're, it's rare that you get um, this glass. Okay. I just remember somebody would order a martini as I'm going to get drinks. What do you want, martini? Sure. And as you walk back, right. come back with a <laughs> half right. martini glass. Yeah. You and you also have to wait 45 minutes for them to get their order because they ordered a very complicated martini. Yeah. I know. But in the Bond movies, they all look super, super glam. Super classy. Uh, because everything about Bond is all about fine living. Yeah. Um, as Two opposed to... Uh, of gin, but I put four ounces in. As opposed to cocktail, which is obsessed with sort of uh, um, uh, promoting this kind of like working class uh, hero sure, aesthetic sure. of life, which is right, right, like, he tries to better himself by going to college and doing book learning, but no one needs that. Just open a bar. And so he's a huge success at the end of the movie. It's very New he, Jersey. Yeah, but and he owns a he he runs a bar. That's how successful he is at the end. It's like good luck uh, staying in profit, staying open for too long, you know. Fair. But whatever. And you're going to be working 24 hours a day, but whatever. You're never going to see those twins she's pregnant with. Uh, quarter ounce of Lille. Spoiler alert. Which is... On a movie from nineteen. Yeah, spoiler alert. Don't watch it. <laughs> which is a um, sort of replacement for the sweet vermouth. Lille being a little bit more delicate, a little sweeter than a dry vermouth. I should say dry vermouth, not sweet. I will now shake the Vesper Martini. I think... I think... I'll order a spoiler alert. Does that sound like a good drink? Like it could a be an interesting. Spoiler interview. alert sounds like a great drink. I think, yeah. But there's got to be something at the bottom that's yeah. different from anything exactly. else you drink. Oh, All right, gentlemen. <laughs> something. Yeah. I order Manhattans at the VIP movie theaters because there's always a cherry. Okay. I, I look forward to the cherry. That sounds like a euphemism for something, but it really <laughs> is the actual cherry that I want. All right, do not drink yet, gentlemen, because I've got to put in. The lemon thin twist? Are you slice of one? lemon twist. I'm going to have some of Ali's, okay. but there's just not a r- enough room for no. three <laughs> martini glasses. Don't drink it yet. Don't drink it yet. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. He's That's garnishing. Okay. Ooh, fascinating. Oh, a ton of, okay. um, what's your favorite Bond movie, Ali? Uh, you're not going to like this. I really I liked... even love the bad ones. Whatever. Do you? Okay. Well, yeah. I really started to enjoy uh, Daniel Craig. I don't. I think maybe there was oh, such no, a gap. Oh, no. Those are all great. Yeah. I even love Quantum of Solace. Okay. If you said Moonraker, I'd be like, get Moonraker out of this studio right Moonraker now. I did not enjoy. Great. One of the best Bond songs, though. Yeah. And a good friend of mine, actually, her first dance at her wedding was that song. And I was like, good choice. <laughs> I uh, I enjoyed Goldfinger more than I probably oh, I should lo- have. I love Goldfinger. It's great. Cheers, gentlemen. Enjoy. Tell me what you think of this particular oh, I like drink. I the smell of lemon Cheers. in the air here. Me too. Yeah. So remember, really when you do... clearing out the man musk in here. When you do... <laughs> Gold finger. <laughs> oh, this is good, uh, Marco. It's a Vesper Martini. Ooh, is it good? Terrific. Bill told me it was good, but I look to you. It's very good, but it's extremely strong. And this is this is what hard drinkers in the '60s would down like nothing sure. because these this is the reason you can why these smoke guys three cigarettes while you drink. These that. guys drank like these guys all died at 62 for a reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, it's like nice. You, it's oh, nice, wow. but it's it's a hard drinker's drink. Yeah, it's like you took um, a hard liquor and sprayed lemon pledge on it. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that description doesn't I'm going to be in Florida it. for 10 days starting next week, and I plan to be this drunk all the time okay. while I'm there, and I think I'm just going to order Vesper martinis. I'm sure they know them in Florida. Well, if you don't, I can give you the recipe. Okay. And that, once again, is half an ounce of vodka, one ounce of gin, so really a nod to the gin martini, and then a quarter ounce of lile. Shaken, not stirred. What would you think? Now, I always do this. Yeah. What if you didn't have the lemon in, you had olives? Where is that because of the lile? That's a bad combo? Yeah, because you're going to... It's, it's, it's the olives and lile that are at odds, yeah? Yes, I would say okay. so. Because the both the gin and the vodka can support the um, tartness or the... Uh, what's the flavor of, a, of an oh, olive? I could use a cigarette right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> The, the harshness That's the of a, Greek in you talking, Bill. It, it would make this room explode, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, no, no smoking in the booth. What a hot box. <laughs> but the lemon here really highlights the aromatics in the gin and yeah. brings a quality to the uh, vodka that really is sound. And then the lile is just there as an aftertaste. Sure. I feel like I'm on vacation. It's wonderful. Totally. Totally. There you go. I ask that because uh, my uh, martinis for the last, I guess, like six years have always been dirty. Extra olives. Yeah, it's safer that way, too. When they're sweet, they go down very easy, and you've had 30 of them before you realize it, and then you're like, why can't I stand up anymore? Yeah. 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 I've I've had the odd birthday. You know what I mean? Fair. Yeah. But, oh, I'm glad you like yeah. it. I'm glad yeah. you like it. I'm sorry I've got these uh, fancy martini glasses, but I was like, well, you know what? I should. No, did, you, did you take a? Did you do the rim happy. with the lemon as well? I didn't. Okay, because I get the lemon scent before I even uh, pull it up to my nose. I did not. I did not use the lemon around the rim. You can. Okay. Um, I just felt there was there's enough of the alcohol when you twist the lemon peel that hits the top of this drink that I didn't feel that the actual rim needed to taste of lemon because you're going to get that within the cocktail or the martini. I should call it a martini because that's what it is itself. Got it. All right. Okay. All right. Let's talk film, boys. Yeah. Right, I, I, I don't it. make a food today. I don't make a food. Part of me was like, should it be popcorn with some kind of seasoning that you make at home? But uh, here we are. We're going to well, get right I into thought, food Well, um, I, I was surprised because I sent Marco a list and I thought we would just do one. Uh, but he said, let's do them all. So here we are at the beginning of our three-hour podcast. So we've done cocktail. We've done cocktail. That, is we've done that cocktail. has been handled. Uh, <laughs> and I wanted to choose movies that were a little bit out of the way because when you talk about food on film, everyone goes to the same four or five. But on the other hand, I did have to do a couple of the essentials because they are worth talking about. Food in movies is often used as a centralizing force. It's where people uh, get together. It's where um, community happens. And in a lot of these movies, it's where change happens. Um, and the first movie that I didn't wasn't able to find in order to rewatch it was um, Mid-August Lunch, Pranzo di Ferragosto. That's right. Which Marco, Marco watched. Yes. Uh, tell us what you thought of it. I thought... Okay, so here's the thing. The film is a, is a wonderful, lighthearted comedy that I appreciate because of the age of a lot of the actors who were in it. Yes. You had these older women who were in this film with this with this lovely, charismatic uh, protagonist. I can't recall his name at the moment. But we, and we, we can say the reason these women are in this film is because this gentleman owes debts to a bunch of uh, That's right. uh, people his age, and they are willing to forgive. The premise is a little absurd to begin yeah. with, but, be, but immediately It takes place during the August break in Italy, which, which I believe happens at the same time as the same break in Greece. August, Germany. Around absolutely. August 15th, right? August 16th in Italy, if right. you go to any major city, it will be like there are crickets there because... Yeah. Yeah. Every Italian goes either to the sea or yeah. the mountains. They and Greece all is the same. take vacation. In Greece, the Feast of the Virgin Mary is August 15th. Okay. That's like the biggest holiday of the year. And everyone takes the whole month off because they're like, well, it's in the middle of the month. We might as well take the whole month off because we're, we're, we're a little bit above work. I'm just going to say that <laughs> controversial statement sure. right there. And it's the same thing in Italy. And in this case, all his friends want to go on their vacation, but they're stuck with their old moms and he owes them all money. So he's, they say... Take care of our moms. He's baby ba- babysitting. Right. And geriatric. we'll let it off. And yep. it's a, an absolutely adorable movie in which food sort of takes the takes the role of somewhat something be, of being a, a, a lifesaver for yes. him, you know. Um, yes. Because he's dealing with these personalities of these older women and trying to deal with that and his mom who he's taking care of. And she, is she the actor who's 90? Yes. The one yeah, 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 yeah. Making her film Acting debut at 90. Debut. She was amazing. She's amazing. Now, the food in itself plays a, a lovely player. In particular, there's one old lady, and this is a bit of a spoiler alert, so grab your martinis and have a nice sip. But, uh, a spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> yeah. When the woman, the the 
father of this older woman says, okay, whatever you do, do not give her any baked pasta or anything with tomato. After 6 p.m., the acidity <laughs> in the tomato is an issue, yeah. And so the scene is her in her bed at midnight with the pan of lasagna and she's just shoveling it down and he's like what are you doing you're not supposed to be having this right and he's like and she's like one more bite as he's taking it away and he's like no this could kill you anyways food plays such a delightful role in this film i felt i felt like it was a character or protagonist Mm -hmm. in it in of itself um as the the protagonist makes all the dishes for these women and they help and they talk about how they would make these uh, dishes. And it was never so overt that you felt like the preparation or the actual food took over the film. And actually, I I thought it would be the opposite. Mm -hmm. I thought... He would make food and they'd be like, get out of here. That's not how you speak right, about right, that, right. Mark. I know so you hate no, this. <laughs> no, no. I thought it they, would be like, that's not how you make this. Right. This is how you make Let yeah, my yeah, 80 yeah. plus years of cooking right. uh, be of service to us all here. But in fact, he's doing the bulk of the cooking in this film. Yeah. Well, I also want to talk about it because it is a very out of the way film that not a lot of people know. Even in Europe, it wasn't that well known, mm-hmm. although it was nominated for a European Film Award. Uh, but I thought it would be a cool uh, selection as something a little bit less than familiar. And uh, 65 minutes long. Or that's right, yeah. That. It's a quick, and it's available a at the Toronto Public selling Library selling. for all of us, our local listeners. Sure. So that's yeah. how I saw it. For Support our, your local library. Yeah. For other listeners as well, check at your library if they have it online. Yeah. I believe, um, no, that was another film that Netflix You can US go had. online to uh, Hoopla. What is it? You know that Is website? it on Hoopla? Well, there's the Hoopla, HooplaDigital.com. Yeah, yeah. That'll link you to public libraries That's in right. your city. And Canopy as and well. And then Canopy is yeah. the other one. Yeah, yeah. I just yeah. I discovered these today. I just didn't have enough time to... It's, so it's mid-August lunch. Is and, and it's a it's lovely little film. One you can watch with your whole family. Yeah. yeah. I would almost suggest watch it with your parent because it. it's so beautiful. Okay. Yeah. All right. So next we have a film that's also not very well known, uh, but one that I, I saw years ago and really loved. And uh, it is actually an American remake of a, of a foreign language film, which usually when that happens is really a, is a terrible. You know, like whenever Americans remake foreign movies, they never do a good job. There's one playing right now in theaters with uh, Brian Cranston, which is a remake of a French movie. Um, but this film is called Tortilla Soup. It is remade from Ang Lee's Eat, Drink, Man, Woman. And oh. it's on par with the original, and which is why I wanted to do it rather than Eat, Drink, Man, Woman, because that movie is very, very well known. Tortilla Soup is the same story, but it's set among a Latino family in L.A. And uh, it's uh, it's a great film for showing, actually, that there are so many things that we all share on Mm -hmm. this lovely little blue marble that we all live on, uh, which is that the story is the same. It's just the food is different, obviously. Um, Hector Elizondo, who we all know as uh, Julia Roberts' concierge and pretty woman, Mm -hmm. who's in every Gary Marshall movie that he ever made, Uh, plays the father of three daughters who all have their life problems to deal with. The film also stars Marco's favorite customer that he ever had, Raquel Welch. that's right. I forgot about that. Who is still looking super fly in her uh, 60s, wherever she is. She's still very beautiful. And what movie, Um, what year was Tortilla Soup? uh, It's from a while ago. It's from like 2001, I want to say. Uh, And not a movie that a lot of people saw, but... It does match the original for quality. It's very funny. It's very heartwarming. And in this one, food t- has the role of being uh, the place of a community center. Basically, all the fights happen in kitchens or around dig- dinner tables. All the announcements happen around dinner tables. All the changes. Everything significant happens when they actually get together to eat. And then they go off into their lives and do the various things that they do. Um you guys watched it? Yeah, um, I have not seen okay, it. So well, I have seen I, the original, I've seen Ang Lee's. So, yeah, it's a know, wonderful film. Which, yeah. the focus on food, I rewound that opening scene a couple of times. You right. I just loved it so much. It was a delightful film. Hector, uh, what's his name? Hector... Uh, Elizondo. Elizondo is fantastic. Yeah. He's fantastic. Did I ever tell the Raquel Welch story? On? You didn't. Okay, so I'll tell that in just a second. But I loved how the food was almost a connector between scenes. Yes. I loved how that worked. But and just the kitchen itself, like just being in yeah. the kitchen is a connector for them. And the, the cinematography with the food shots in this film was probably my favorite of all the films okay. that featured the, the food. I thought this one did an exceptional job of showcasing the food. This film also has Elizabeth Peña in it, who is uh, one of the most wonderful actresses who ever appeared in movies and very sadly died a few years ago at a very young age. And I thought she was just always brilliant in everything, and I particularly always loved her in this movie as the lovelorn single oldest sister who falls in love with Paul Rodriguez. Yeah. 
and puts um, uh, hemorrhoid cream on her eyes to deal with wrinkles, which I always remembered and always makes me laugh. <laughs> yeah. I thought I thought the um, the older sister was great too. Uh, That's the oldest Pena, sister. Pena, 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 Pena. Yeah, Pena. she was great. Sorry. The uh, other two aren't as good. The no. youngest daughter is not a good actress. No. She's very appealing, but she's not good, and her boyfriend's ugly. And she was the poor middle she- sister. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. The middle sister is not a super strong actress, but she's beautiful and also very. There's something winsome about her where it's right. like she's likable. She also has a small part in a movie called Six Days, Seven Nights with Harrison Ford and Anne Hayes. She plays the mm, little Latina oh, yeah. chica who has an affair with David Schwimmer and he shows him her bathing suit. And uh, he's like, I thought that was an eye patch. It's a bathing suit, silly. And that's how I always remember her. There you go. As I'm <laughs> yeah. sure she wants to be remembered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a catchphrase now. <laughs> She doesn't. She doesn't care for that at all. Yeah. I'm sure. Man, uh, you know who I didn't care for in real life was Raquel Welch. So I'll tell you. The oh, story. you were being sarcastic yes. about best customer oh, yeah, yeah, ever. Yeah. I didn't catch the. Listen, sarcasm. Raquel Welch is probably in the top three of beautiful women who ever lived. Mm-hmm. But anyone I know who's ever dealt with her has not come away from the experience with a good story oh, to tell. Okay, let's yeah. hear it. And you you're a big fan of Raquel Welch, right? Listen, I think she's a fabulous movie star, a good actress, maybe not the best. Mm-hmm. And I also know enough about her biography to know that she was treated very badly in her initial years in Hollywood, mm-hmm. and I think it hardened her and to the point that now when people get in contact with her, they, they can't stand her because yeah. she was very... She, she held herself to a high standard and was very demanding and was very... Uh, insistent on not being sexually exploited in her early years in Hollywood, and as a result, she got a label of difficult. Okay, they were they were always calling her difficult, mainly because she was standing up for herself. And I'm guessing I don't know this for a fact, but I'm going to guess that this embittered her. Embittered her. Okay, I'm drunk from Marco's cocktail. So oh, yeah. more and want. embittered her to the point that now she's just like fuck it. If they think I'm a bitch, I'm going to be a bitch. I think that's what happened. And don't feel you have to drink it all, gentlemen. If it's, don't if feel it's, like you have to tell right. me not to drink it all. Also, okay? but go on. She was, yes. maybe she took that bitterness and that, and, and what was done to her and laid it onto me because she was, and I'm not defending her. I'm no, saying, no. I think this is the pathology. Yeah. I, I hope she hears this because she, so here's, here's Raquel Welch, major podcast listener. You I'm know, she saying. is, you yeah. know, when she's getting her makeup done and stuff and a side note, you just did an episode of bad gay movies and you featured a film that she was in, correct? Mara Breckenridge, in which she reveals that there was never a more beautiful woman in the history of the world. Her body was perfect. So check out that episode, episode... 97? 97. I'm on drunk, bad, I don't remember. Bad, bad gay movies, just yeah. look it up. So I'm working in a restaurant in New York that doesn't exist anymore in Soho called Barolo. And one day we'll do a show where I just talk about the shenanigans that happened there because it was a movie in itself. It's an amazing Barolo in old Montreal. The episode will be called Under the Bus. Yeah. (laughs) So we hated waiters. We all hated to serve celebs because oftentimes they were the most difficult people to to serve. Side note, I loved serving Russian mobsters because they were wonderful and they tipped like crazy and they'd bring their mistresses and they just have a great time. So I never had a problem serving Russian mobsters. Okay. Okay. But... (laughs) I'm told, okay, Marco, you have Raquel Welch at your table. I'm like, really? And they're like, yeah, sorry, everybody else, it's your turn. And to, to put it in context, like, this is when she was uh, ruining Victor Victoria on Broadway. Yeah, she took yeah. over for Julie Andrews. I saw Julie Andrews in it. She was fantastic. And then Raquel was on Broadway, killed that show. Yeah. She comes into Not my... that she killed it. She, she just, killed the show. She, she killed the show. Yeah, the yeah, show. No, yeah thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you for correcting my, my colloquial jargon. Gorgeous and good actress, not necessarily great singer. No, yeah. and not a great patron in a restaurant. So <laughs> I go to serve her, and it's her and her daughter. Her, her daughter, you might know, was in Cocoon. Tawny Welch. Tawny Welch. Yeah. So she was in... You don't have to give Bill a you might on anything. Yeah, you're right, you're right. He's just going to be an encyclopedia. It's here. Um, yeah. And so... I go to serve them, and so I say, um, what can I get for you? And she's like, I'll have this, I'll have this, and I'll have a side of asparagus. Now, this is in the fall, and asparagus is in, in season. Our restaurant would use seasonal vegetables, right? I said, I don't have asparagus, but I have squash. She finally looks up from her menu because she ordered without even looking at me, which is fine. And she's like, you don't have asparagus. I'm like, no, we don't. She goes, well, can't you get some? And I'm like, well, she goes, this is a restaurant. You don't have asparagus? Get some. And her daughter, Tawny, was embarrassed. I could tell she was embarrassed. Oh, I'm good. like, okay. 
Uh, I'll see what I can do. So I go in the kitchen and I'm, I tell the chef, I'm like, she wants asparagus. And the chef's like, Marco, we don't have asparagus. I go, I know, I told her that. She just told me she wants asparagus, right? She's like, he shakes his head. And you know how chefs are, right? Oh, yeah. Pissed off at me, even of though course, of I'm course. not the one who's deciding this shit. And so he sends one of our busboys to go and buy asparagus. Now we're in Soho, so this this busboy has to go pretty far to find find asparagus. I think he went to Chinatown. Comes back, we make the asparagus. By the time I take it to her table, she's like, "I can't have it now," and she just dismisses the asparagus that we went out of our way to have. And her daughter. To her credit, said, "I'll have it. Don't worry. Thank you so much. I'll have it." There's a reason why someone uh, uh, blew a hole through a poster of her to get to freedom and Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> so you know funny. what I mean? That's yeah. so funny. I wonder if that was a message. <laughs> I wonder if that was a message to Raquel. Yeah, and that's my take on Raquel. So she ate nothing that night. She had um, not even the salad. I think she had like a, uh, a small piece of protein. I want to say it was like a, a filet of some sort, filet mignon maybe, and uh, that was it. Excellent wig line. I will say the Raquel Welch wig collection. Oh, really? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Yep. Well, that's good okay. to know. My friend tried to get her mom to uh, to to get one when she got cancer, but she wouldn't go for it. Too expensive? Or I don't know. I don't, maybe expensive. too. Yeah, maybe yeah. I don't know. The other thing that's memorable about tortilla soup is I always remembered that line where she talks about why we clink glasses. Oh, that's right. Right, which is not the story that I've other otherwise heard about why we clink glasses. The main story that I've heard is that we clink glasses because. Uh, a bit of their drink gets in yours, mm. a bit of your drink this gets in, in theirs. This is the days of poisoning each right. other. And yes. the, right. But in her version, it's that uh, eating and drinking involves every sense except sound. It involves taste, oh, like sight, that. smell, but you clink so that sound will also be I involved. like that one yeah. versus the yeah. one that suggests yeah. you might be poisoning, poisoning. me. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, not on a Latina girl's mind in <laughs> yeah, the yeah. early 2000s. No. Lots of chunky heels in that movie, though. It really took me back to a time, I got to say. Yeah. A lot of Jennifer Aniston hair in that movie. As um, there should have been, yeah. 2001. I, I think that's what's lacking in current films. A bit of Janet, Jennifer Aniston hair. You can watch Dumpling and get some of her hair if you want. Oof, not a good movie. Okay. Um, so moving on to our last two films. These, okay. are, uh, these are ones that I'm really, really behind because uh, I love them both very much. Uh, first up, of course, I had to do Big Night because Big Night, the first thing you see on the screen is Timpano Productions yes. Presents. Because Marco, of course, made this movie. I wish. I wish. <laughs> yeah. uh, Big Night was actually the highest critically rated film of 1996. And it's shocking that it is as forgotten as it is given that it was raved about when it came mm. out. No it Oscar nominations. Stanley Tucci, I think. Uh, no, he was already kind of on his way. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, it definitely it definitely upped him in terms of being in that respected class of sure. artists. He directed, co-directed. Co-directed and he, uh, right, and, yeah. that's right. And I'm, uh, I'm sure it's based on like an uncle of his or something, I don't know. Uh, but it's about two Italian brothers in Brooklyn. One of them played by the very not Italian Tony Shalhoub, who does a very good job. It's fantastic. I think it's Jersey. It's. I thought it was Brooklyn. I thought it was Jersey. Okay, because they're by the water too. Oh, right? that's right. Okay, so I'm not as good at New York as you are, so I'm no, going to no, take your good. word for that. I thought it was Brooklyn, uh, no, but I, they I uh, they they're actually from Italy. They're not Italian American, and they've come and they've opened up a restaurant. And um, this is a very interesting movie about film as an expression of selfhood in a way because. They insist on running their restaurant to the high standards of the food that they made back home. Um, and they're making no money. No one's coming in. Caroline Aaron comes in at the beginning and is smoking at the table and doesn't understand why the risotto looks like that. Yeah. She and uh, There's Tony no seafood Shalhoub are, in the seafood risotto. That's yeah, right. She and Tony Shalhoub are both on... Um, uh, marvelous Mrs. Oh, Maisel, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, that's right. That's right. And across the street, Ian Holm is running a spaghetti and meatball Italian restaurant with red checkered tablecloths, and he's making a mint. And it's this, referred this, to as a criminal by Tony. Absolutely, who is yeah. who is unbending to the point that his brother gives it to him in it to his face at the end of the movie, and kind of rightly so, which is that he's been trying to hold them together for so long, and it's like, dude, you got to give just a little. And his response, which I love the most, if I sacrifice my art. I die. Yeah. This movie is uh, poetry on film. Yeah. All the characters are marvelous. It's the first time I ever saw Alice and Janney in anything. And I remember when we I rented it, and I told my best friend I'd seen it, and she said, didn't you just love The Florist? Yeah. And I've been the biggest Alice and Janney fan ever mm-hmm. since. I think it's one of Minnie Driver's finest performances. And, of course, the ultimate and fabulous Isabella Rossellini, who just cannot be beat for glamour and class. So this this film has a cast, a dream cast. Yeah. But it has an atmosphere as well. It oh. really feels like the 50s. That opening scene where he just opens the door of the 
restaurant and you can just smell a New York mm. summer. Mm. It's the most wonderful feeling. And the whole film just has – it also has – I guess the licensing rights for that Rosemary Clooney song yep. were on sale in the 90s because it's been used in any movie that ever has to do the slightest bit with Italian-Americans. You all of a sudden hear, hey, Mambo, yeah. Mambo. Uh, yeah, anyway. I think it was that film that made that happen because prior to really? that, you didn't see No, because it's in Mermaids and that was a few years before that. Oh, was it? Yeah, when he's when he's shaving and Christina Ricci's doing the shaving with the shaving cream. Oh, I, stand, I know, I'm I a stand bit of a corrected. No, I stand corrected. All you Calabrese do a Mambo like a crazy. I Marco. happen to be half Calabrese. <laughs> That's so right. There you go. Um, but this, this film is fascinating in the way that these two warring restaurants they come to a head in although that they're e- not warring is one is not even in the well, class right of the that's other, right so I mean uh, they're basically starving to death these guys yeah, because yeah. no one's eating at their restaurant and they're probably doing a lot of freebies to you know well that one in. guy's like I don't have money and Tucci and Shalhoub says oh, money no. what am I gonna right. do with money he's basically <laughs> Tony Shalhoub is trying to live in the old world and he yeah. doesn't realize that the new world yeah. has other requirements of them in order for them to survive my favorite line in that film or one of the, fu- the lines that really resonated me with me is when the when the patron asks for a side of side of spaghetti and meatballs with her risotto. risotto. And he just wants to die. And then uh, Tony Tony Shalhoub's character, Primo, uh, says to Stanley Tucci's character, Secondo, yeah, what, what, what else does she want? A side of mashed potatoes? How much starch can this woman eat? And I just, I just, yeah. love, everything about that just <laughs> spoke to me. Uh, does it say something about where they're from, that their names are first and second? Is that like something that's typical of a particular part of Italy, that, that they that would name their parents? brothers, they would name sons that way? You know, it's interesting. Like, um, I wonder if it's saying that they're from a small village or something. It could be. I, I, I don't think it's very common that you would name your children in, in sequence. Right. Uh, primo, secondo, terzo, quarto. Yeah. Terzo, you never hear, but quarto you would hear which is for uh fourth and so it's a little unusual it was unusual for me to see that in right. a film i would imagine that would be much more common in the south of italy i think that's exactly I, where i they're thought from. it was for comedic effect oh no i thought it yeah, was the comedic names that they, no, now, no, i know in ancient rome they named their daughters numbers because they didn't bother to give women names sure that's why there's all those octavias running around R- right you know <laughs> but uh, I think it. I I would guess it is for comedic effect. Okay. I want to say a couple of things. Shalhoub's Italian in this film is fantastic. Yeah, he, he learned for this. I mean, this guy's an Egyptian dude from from right. Ohio or yeah. something, yeah. right? And strangely, very sexy. I get why the florist uh, turns upside oh, down absolutely. when she sees him. And yeah. then his confidence yeah. is zero. It's yeah, yeah, negative yeah. when yeah. he's in That's the a florist very charming shop. Aspect of the and movie. as soon as he's in his element, yeah. And this, that's what I related to most, that yeah. when I'm around food, I can't be shaken, you know, yeah. as far as confidence yeah. goes. It's really... He was, he, they, everyone was great in this film. Shalhoub's Italian has to be, I just have to mention, underline it. Tucci's Italian was great. Uh, Rossellini's uh, Italian was perfect. Well, she's, uh, she's, she's Italian, she's right? Yeah. yeah, but uh, Shalhoub's Italian, I could tell that he, like, his rhythm might not have been perfect, but his pronunciation and, the, right. and how he did it was perfection. So I love that scene him. when my mini driver goes outside and she sits on the bench and Isabella Rossellini is just being glamorous yeah. smoking. I think that scene is fantastic. Mm, it's a lovely little interplay between those two characters. Yeah. And yeah. so Isabella Rossellini has always been a very underrated actress because she's just so beautiful and she's right. a model and whatever. And I also love that this film centers itself around this as the title says, this big night, yeah. which takes up a huge amount of the screen time of the film, which is that Ian Holm has told them, I'm going to bring Louis Prima to your restaurant. He's going to love your food. Jazz He's going to make you famous. That's right. Yeah. Oh, famous also for The Jungle Book. He's the uh, orangutan in The Jungle That's Book. That's right. Um, Louis Prima, spoiler alert, never shows. It draw, you know, basically puts them under because they've spent everything they had on this one big night in which the signature dish is... A timpano? Yes. Which, have you ever had one? Okay, so here comes my portion of this show. Okay, I'm going to chime in. So, I... And, w- uh, sorry, I should point out, no. when I met Marco, the first thing I thought of when I heard his name was, oh, he's the food from the big night. Yeah. Right. And now this yeah. story. And now this yeah. story. So, I, years ago, was working for my college university radio station. And I had a chance to be part of the accredited press at TIFF, the Toronto International Film Festival, when Big Night premiered. Okay. So... Um, a lot of the press agents were telling me, you should really see Big Night because your last name and you should interview, get an interview with, with Tucci. So I hadn't heard anything about it, but there was buzz happening. So I went to one of the screening and I was like, I've got to get an interview with Tucci. But at that point, it became the little darling of that year's film festival, would yep. you say? Yeah. And so Tucci... Well, that was where it started and then became the highest critically rated film of the year. And it was on a shelf for two years. Okay. Uh, prior to it getting it, it getting its release. Yeah. So I was 
was able to get an interview with Tony Shalhoub and all the uh, the reps from the film were trying to get me an interview with Tucci, but he was booked solid because the film was so big, right? So I was like, oh, because I wanted to ask him what part of Calabria he's from because in the thing it said his family had come from Calabria, which is where my father is from and hence my last name. And I wanted to know if there was a connection between my last name and this dish. Mm -hmm. So I do this wonderful interview with Tony Shalhoub. He couldn't be more the opposite of Raquel Welch. Yeah. <laughs> he was lovely. He was delightful. He was insightful. He was charming. He was just someone you would want around on set or at a bar having a Vesper, let's say. Yeah. Right? So we're wrapping up the interview, and it was in a hotel room. And as we finish the interview, who walks in but Campbell Scott and Stanley Tucci. Both directors of Campbell this Scott film. Campbell Scott co-directed yeah. the yeah. film, is also in the film, right. also the son of George C. Scott, and, uh, and Colleen Dewhurst. That's right. Marilla so, Cuthbert. Because he has a Canadian connection, right? It wasn't his mom. Isn't Colleen Dewhurst Canadian? I can't remember. Okay, yeah. fair enough. I'm just My encyclopedic throw... knowledge has its limits. Well, plus you... you Do you want another Vesper? <laughs> no. You're okay. Okay. No. So. <laughs> that's a hard no. That's a hard no on uh, the Vesper. So, so, he walks in and Stanley Campbell walk in, and the press rep turns to uh, Stanley Tucci, and you can see he had just done a ton of interviews because he was taking off his tie, and he was, like, ready to just chill in this room. And he was, was already like, bald at this point, right? That's a hairpiece in the movie? Yes. Yeah. I believe so. That's what oh, I thought. Good yeah, hair. I yeah. a great yeah. hairpiece. That's why you couldn't go in the water. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the press agent says, uh, Mr. Tucci, this is Marco. He goes, Marco Timpano? And I was like, yeah. He goes... I'm sorry, we've been trying to make it work so I get an interview with you, but it's just been so busy. He knew who I was, which floored me right then and there. And he was so wonderful. So I got a chance to ask him. I said, Stanley, I just want to know, you're from Calabria, and my dad's from Calabria, and my last name is Timpeno. I want to know if there's a connection. What part of Calabria, which is the toe of Italy, if anybody's mm -hmm. wondering what part of Italy is that? Where the Versace's are from. Right. Where yeah. the fungus uh, gathers. Yes. In the toe. No? Yeah, yeah. actually, there's great porcini. Which explains there's, Donatella's face. There's great porcini mushrooms sure. that you find probably the best in the world are How in Calabria. unbelievably appropriate. Yeah. So anyways, so I say to him, what part of Calabria are you from? And he says, Cosenza. And I, and I, I was crestfallen because my dad is from Catanzaro. So I said, oh, I go, I thought maybe because of the dish, I go, my dad's from Catanzaro. And he goes, oh, where in Catanzaro? And I said, Serra San Bruno. And he goes, my maternal grandmother's from Sera San Bruno. That's where the dish is from. He goes, I've never oh, met someone from Sera San Bruno. That's why, right? it's called, that's why you're called Timpano. Yeah. So he goes, yeah, it's a dish. Your from... grandmother was a dish and she, you got named after it. So after that, I go to my family. I go to my father. I go to my aunt. I go to everyone. I said, okay, tell me about the Timpano, the dish. And they all look at me like I'm crazy. And my dad's that? like, what are you talking about? I go, there's a dish from our hometown. It's called the timpano. It's like a drum. You bake all this pasta and eggs and meatballs mm. and tomato sauce in a in a in a pan, mm -hmm. and then it looks like a drum, and you slice it. And it it's looks a like your it looks like a bedpan yeah, that they kind of bake sure it did. in. Yeah. And my dad said, Do you think we had the money? Mm. To get all those ingredients to uh, make yeah. this dish? It's an expensive dish. I assume that it's something that you only bust out for when the royalty right. come to visit. Oh, yeah. it's not, well, with the uh, way Stanley was banging yeah. his head yeah, on yeah, one yeah. of the pans. Why? Why? And also because it's a, it's a complicated, lengthy yeah, dish. Yeah. But I said to my dad, I said, but it, it's, it has our name in it. Yeah. It's clearly someone in our family made this dish or has a recipe. Radio silence. Mm. Nothing. So it's tragic for me because... I've never had it, and it seems like no one in my family, none of the panels. I've never been yet. anywhere that offers it yeah. either. You know, it seems like it's like a contained paella, basically, except without the rice. Sure, that's what it seems sure. like to it me. It looks nothing, and I would say it's nothing like a paella. And I think I can because it's my right. name, right? I've never had it. But <laughs> my goal this year is to make a timpano for myself, my wife, and my family. Yeah. So we'll see if I, if I we'll invite me over. Guest yeah. host, yeah. maybe, yeah. a friend. Because I would be curious to see if it's good because it does seem to be the pièce de résistance mm. in this movie. And it really impresses everybody. But hilarious. All right, listen. It's... We'll do a part two to the f food okay. and film. And I'll endeavor to make it. I'm not going to promise it. Okay. But I'll endeavor to make one and see if I can do it properly before I serve it to you guys. But then we'll do another one where I make it and we all have it. How's that? Yeah. But yeah. then you got to make a drink. Yeah. Oh, okay. great. All great. Right. Can do. Just crack open a beer. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then. We'll move on to our last film. Awesome. 
So uh, this is a film that is always brought up when people talk about food on film. It is the first movie that people think of, and as such, it is a very obvious choice. The cook, but there's also the, we- the wife. The the th- that's dinner. right. Yeah, that's right. We're yeah. going to eat a dead body. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, but there's a reason why this film is always at the top of the list is because it is the best example of food on film. And it's also one of the greatest films ever made. It's one of my absolute favorite films. I think it is a perfect movie from beginning to end. It's sense of calm and control so calm. and uh, beauty and, of course, food, which doesn't actually play a strong role until the very end. Yeah. But there's also a reason for that. Anyway, the film is Babette's Feast by Gabriel Axel. It's from Denmark. It won the Best Foreign Language Film Oscar in 1987. It is a film that the director tried to make for 15 years, and he could not get it made because producers kept saying, no one wants to see this. But then Out of Africa won seven Oscars. Out of Africa is, of course, about Karen Blixen, who wrote under the pen name Isaac Dennison, who wrote a story called Babette's Feast. And because of the renewed interest in her, they said, all right, we'll make this movie. And he took this story, which was actually, she wrote it in English and set it in Norway. And he rewrote it in Danish and set it in Denmark on the coast of Jutland. And he added a few things. It's not an exact translation of the film, of the novel, of the story, I should say. But it is, in effect, uh, the Criterion Collection edition does come with the original story. And it is... Um, in in spirit of very accurate adaptation, and it is about these two young women who, or these two women who live in um, in the coast of Jutland. Uh, they were the daughters of a very uh, strict Calvinist uh, uh, pastor, who you know uh, raised them in the same austerity that they all live in in this fishing village where everything is gray and they eat those flat so fish. Great. Yeah, that's what the, this movie. Is that, if you don't know, it takes a while to get yeah, into right. the grayness, and yeah. as you mentioned, the calmness. You're like, Hey, let's have something happen here. And I'm watching it thinking, okay, Bill recommended this film. And there's going to be food in it. And the the only thing I see for a while is they make this soup out of bread and ale. Ale bread. (laughs) Ale bread. Ale bread. (laughs) They make this ale bread soup. And I'm like, this can't be the... This but the be. beauty of, of course, the beauty of the sight of all this terrible way that these people live is such a beautiful contrast to the way it ends. Uh, because these two women have a French woman show up on their doorstep one night who is uh, escaping the Franco-Prussian Wars and has been sent there by uh, a singer who had fallen in love with one of the women when, when they were very young. And he said, go, go to them. They are very, they will be good to you. And she goes and lives with them. She has nothing. She has no one back in France because her father, her husband and her son were killed. And uh, they say, we can't pay you. But she says, I'll live for free. I'll, you know. And so she lives with them for 14 years as their maid, Babette. She learns to speak Danish. Yeah, which is incredible. She's played by Stéphane Audran, who is one of the greatest uh, movie stars of French history, one of the greatest actresses in French history. She was married to Claude Chabrol, who is one of the greatest directors in French history. She played Isabelle Huppert's mother in the movie Violette Nozière, which is where Gabrielle Axel saw her and said he really wanted her to be in this film. She is also in the film that the movie Unfaithful is based on oh. with Diane Lane. Mm-hmm. It's based on a French movie that she played the wife in. Okay. Uh, so I highly recommend her. But anyway, um, at the end of the movie, she reveals that the one tie that she has to France is this lottery ticket that a friend of hers renews for her every year. And she comes to them and says, my lottery ticket, I, I won. I have won 10,000 francs. And I want to, and the 100th anniversary of your father's birth is coming up. I want to do a dinner for you and the the members of your little parish. And they agree. And the most delightful thing in this movie is that they they are terrified of the sin of the food they're going to eat. Because she puts, you know, she goes away for a week and comes back with a giant tortoise and quails and uh, something on fruits, ice, a, and, a fish. That's right. Uh, uh, copious amounts of wine, that's champagne. Right. Um, and the people in this village are the kind of Christians who believe in, that any kind of pleasurable indulgence is sin. Yeah. And she has that wonderful nightmare, you know, where she, yes. she's, you know, and she goes to the people and she says, "This is one of the sisters is having the nightmare." That's yeah. right. And she goes to the people in her parish and she says, "I didn't know. I just wanted to do something for her because she wanted to put on this dinner." And uh, they say, "Look, look, we'll eat it, but." We we won't enjoy it. We're not going to taste it. Yeah. And I, I, it's, it's just delightful. So this this is a film in which food is a, is a mode of sort of transformation, of realization, yeah. and of sort of bringing you closer to 
God, if you believe in God,、yep. or to something more than just the humdrum of everyday life.、Sure. And it's and, in the third act where we see the food take, a, a, a stand and deliver. And, and I take love、presents. the whole sequence of her putting on the dinner because I love that there's always process.、Yeah. She tells the boy, "This goes in the small glasses. This goes in the big glasses." She has everything in an order.、Mm -hmm. And one of the members, one of the people who comes to the dinner, is the local aristocrat, basically, with her son, who was in love with the other sister when they were young.、Yeah. And he talks about how I used to go to this cafe, the Cafe Anglais in Paris, and this woman was a chef who put on this amazing meal, which we later find out is Babette.、Okay. And、um, he makes, she makes、uh, gai en sarcophage, the quails in the little sarcophagi,、um, edible sarcophagi, of course,、mm. and.、Um, And these people, all the table, they refuse to talk about the food. They're they're acting like they're not enjoying it. But then, ah,、oh, that wine tastes good. We take another sip of the wine. We eat a little bit of the food. And these people who've never had anything other than that flat, dry ass fish and this ölbrot、mm. are suddenly transported to another world with the meal that they have, to the point that they go out. And、uh, I always get misty at the scene that they they go out at the end of the dinner and they gather together in a circle around the town square and they sing a song, and、uh, it's they've just been transported to heaven for a moment,、yeah. you know. And I just、uh, the the beautiful simplicity of this film is something that is extremely cherishable. I watch it all the time. Oh, do you really? I watch this film a lot. I I I just I enjoy going on this journey every time that I see it because. <laughs> Uh, there's a pleasure to it, and the food has a lot to do with it. I mean, watching them eat it, it takes its time showing、yeah. the food.、Mm -hmm. It takes its again, take, it takes its time showing that process of everything happening in a certain order. And I love that she stays in the kitchen the whole time; no one sees her,、yeah. and she's so deeply satisfied. By putting on this meal, that's one of the best things. Absolutely, yeah, she doesn't have to be out there going, "Here's what this is. Here's what this is." Just, right, and、oh, not man, telling them what how to enjoy、yeah. it or whatever, and just、uh, she gets the odd report back and she's happy. But it's just, you know, she's reliving her old life and she's remembering good times by doing this because、mm -hmm. she loved her job.、Yeah. And then at the end, the women say, "Well, now you've got all this ten thousand francs. You're going to leave and whatever." She goes, "No, I'm not going anywhere." Dinner for twelve at Cafe Anglais cost ten thousand francs. She had spent her lottery money on this, on this one、meal. occasion, and she says it wasn't just for you, which I find very,、yeah. very deeply moving.、Mm. Which is that it was for me to feel alive again.、Yeah. Sure. And I just, I mean, it has that kind of irony that usually you find in a short story, which is something that Isaac Dennison, nay Karen Blixen, was brilliant at. She was a brilliant storyteller, and if you haven't read any of her writing, all her writing is superb.、Um, but、uh, this this film is. Just a perfect adaptation of, and a, just a perfect movie. And、uh, what you know. I love most about this is that I've always been a big believer in、uh, in spice as an ingredient, and spice being a big part of、right. meals. And I've never made women sing in the town square or anything, but I've literally <laughs> watched this yeah, that, that know. I know of. Who、yeah. knows what happens after the parties? Yeah.、Uh, but I've watched this sort of like,、uh, let's say, low energy. Nothing as gray as Denmark, the、right. Jutland, but.、Uh, This is sort of like sort of not morose, but very calm, very relaxed.、Yeah. And then just as the food comes out and has certain things, and I never make it like that sort of Sri Lankan, like I can't taste anything but the spice. It's、right. insane.、Sure. But just you know, as it grows, different like curries and different,、mm. even like even in a spring roll, like oops,、right. has a little. This, That's right. This, this dip has a little bit of a spice, and you just you can hear as the chef conversation. People are talking faster.、Yeah. You see a little. Glisten、yeah. of sweat on them. You can see it's just the greatest, and that's why I under, understood her satisfaction. Right, like, I don't need to be there with these.、People. I mean, I've never had that experience. My experience of giving my、uh, Canadian friends food was making them eat the goat intestine soup that my mom made at Easter, <laughs> which I pretended I was also eating too. But I just wanted to see the looks on their faces when they did it because they were really good sports. Right.、Uh, <laughs> the thing that's also so masterful about this movie is the sense of control in the way that it's shot, in the way that it plays out, but also.、Um, Um, the, in Babette's character herself, because she knows where she is, she knows where she's come from. She's come from like Paris in the late eighteen、uh, yeah, hundreds. Nothing to prove to anybody, yeah, right? right? But she's come from like the center of culture and you know liveliness and、uh, food and music and whatever. And she's in this bland ass fishing village, and you can see her looking at everyone in their in their very 
simple and sometimes backwards way of living and she's she does not outwardly judge them you can see her taking it in and saying nothing she doesn't complain about the boring food she has to make for people right she doesn't judge their way of life she never says you know i used to do something that's better she simply does what she does at the end of the movie yeah. and not even with an air and there's something so satisfying about letting that control go in this very like classy and humane way you know she's a very kind and i don't know i i can never say enough good things about this movie mm. i'm truly transported by it every time i see it i absolutely loved it this is a lovely film and i'm glad we saved it as the last film that we we're talking about today because i felt like the drink aspect of this film played a role in it too yes all the different wines and the champagnes and the order in which they were to be served and how much and which glass was precise in this film yeah. and it played, it's very French yeah. it's very French yeah. and and it was a player and you could see when the gentleman the general who drank the wine he was like this tastes like a and he knew what it was That's right. and yeah. uh, it was just and they just ignored him I do love that, <laughs> that the director also indulges himself in the shot of the old lady drinking water and realizing like it's a W.C. Fields moment where she's like oh no shit, fuck this and she grabs the wine glass instead and drinks more of that and licks her lips like yeah. a little fiend that yeah. she is. It was and there's also a little like, you know, the, the, we find out that these people had, excuse me, oh, I'm burping from your drink. Sorry These about people that. had... The first um, or the second drink? Probably the second. The first. Oh, okay. uh, these people are having their sort of little backstories where they were fighting. There was an infighting amongst the people that is all solved by them having this transporting meal where they're suddenly, they're all brotherly love. Uh, two of them are actually played by uh, actors who played adulterous lovers in a Danish film in the 40s that oh, I've wow. seen called Day of Wrath. The two people who uh, who are adulterers in this film, that's sort of an in-joke in, for the Danish film community mm, who are I all, see. I'm sure, listening to this podcast. Oh, they, we have a huge following. <laughs> if Raquel's listening, the Danish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, for anyone, if they haven't seen this movie, I, I, I recommend it uh, super, super highly. Uh, it's in the Criterion collection, although I have not done it yet on my Criterion podcast. Oh, my God. Because okay. I'll probably just get Marco to send me this file and I'll put that on. <laughs> oh yeah, no yeah. problem. My yeah. Criterion's is your other podcast. Right. I should mention you yeah. can wa- you can see it on iTunes, Stitcher, uh, all, all, anywhere. Pod you, knife, Pod knife, yep. uh, radio, radio public, wherever you listen yep. to podcasts, you'll find. That. And Bill is here for two reasons. And one, we just were uh, you know given the pleasure of hearing, which is talking about film in a way that yep. you are unique. The other reason was to help me lose weight because I'm sweating it out in this. That's a, that's a reason I didn't know. That's a bonus. Yeah. But the other reason was to find out if there was any legitimacy to the third segment of our show. Oh, man. I was oh, such yes. A good time. I'm so excited. <laughs> All right. What's in Marco's mouth? That's All right. right. <laughs> okay. Get set, not going to be a dingling, Marco. Don't worry. I'm not. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. What's in Marco's mouth? That's right. What's in Marco's mouth? It's nothing dirty. We'll be guessing. We'll be messing. Let's find out. What's in Okay, um, so you are here to witness, like you just said, off I'm very excited about this. So Marco is currently putting a uh, sleep mask on, which I am assuming he otherwise uses uh, for his beauty rest or when he flies. <laughs> it's my wife's, but yes. Okay. Yes, right. that's exactly what... Because apparently it? that's the secret to falling asleep on an airplane, is a sleep mask. Really? Yeah. Because it's, people don't realize it's the light that keeps you awake more than anything else. More than the noise. I, 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 I've researched this because I'm someone who has never been able to sleep on an airplane. It's a bit off topic, but yes. Okay. Including 30 hours to Australia, in which I stayed wide awake Ooh, the entire time. Oh, man. my God. Yeah. Okay, well, I usually get a little bit giddy during this time. I'm going to control my emotions because we have a guest here. Yeah. Can you um, just see if there's levels happening? Uh, there's levels happening. Great, great. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Uh, I'm going to put it in your mouth. Okay, but uh, before we do <laughs> that... For the listeners, it looks like dog food. Hey, don't, don't you say can't that. give him a hint. You oh. can't give him a okay, hint. Okay, hang on a second. I'm hang, just joking. Hang on a second here. Okay, I just need to know a couple things. How big is this thing? Because I don't want another pierogi it's that not I'm not expecting. Huge. Okay, yeah, it's and it's can small. I put it in my hand? Eventually. Or? Just okay. take it easy. All right. Just relax. All right. All, right. All right, open your mouth. Okay. Here it is. It's just uh, a little thing. There you go. Just relax. All right. There we go. You didn't even have it on a spoon. That was your hand. My fingers. Exactly. Okay, it is... This is it's, very upsetting, listeners. It's like Pinochet Day in this house. It's not... <laughs> yeah. It's not okay. pleasant. That's why I like it. I go real... Yeah. Augusto, was that his first okay, name? It's Pino- chewy. It's a fruit. It's a dried fruit of some sort. It kind of has a craisiny kind of texture to it, but it's not craisin. It doesn't taste red to me. It tastes darker. Um, it has like a... It, it uh, got into my teeth like a uh, jujube or one of those kind of candies would. 
Not going to lie, and, I thought it was a Flintstone vitamin. Okay, okay. <laughs> and so um, I, I think I need one more. Yeah, to here, let's put it in okay. your hand. Now we put okay. it in your hand. Can I, am I allowed to smell it? Yeah, smell it. Am I allowed to smell okay. it? Because sometimes it, you, you get mad when uh, I smell hold it. Hold on, I have to consult the international judges. <laughs> okay. 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 That's um, a no on the smelling from Croatia and can, from Korea. Can Everyone I else thinks the it's IOC. fine. see. Okay, it's like a current. I'm gonna. It's either like a current or. A, it's, a, it's not a. What, what is a bluet called? A blue. It's not a blueberry. Surprise! It's a cyanide pill. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Speaking it, of James Bond, yeah, all these dreams finally came true. You're oh, oh, you. Did, is this a piece of something? Like, that's not its actual size, right? Like, is it a fig that you cut into small little morsels? I love how you think I'm conspiring. Yeah. I know. And also, no. everyone, Marco's stress levels have gone through uh, the roof. This, <laughs> this is only the fun to listen to. Face. To be here is actually quite upsetting. I'm trying. I feel like I'm watching, uh, I feel like I'm watching some kind of, like, um, human trafficking happening in front of me. It's like, I can't I, stop. I, I, Bill, I always say, I try not now not to say how much I hate this because it sounds like I'm just a I know, but it's the best part of the show. I'm sorry the ratings are in. And it, it okay. stays. Okay. Damn the, it. Suit, okay. the suits have made the word uh, clear. This part stays. Can I have one last piece? Because I'm allowed three, right? Yeah. You're allowed if, three. Okay. When you're failing yeah. he this hates way. It. He hates doing this, but he wants failing. to just keep eating. Wait, I'm not failing. This is a dried fruit of some sort. This is a dried something like that. It has... Is it current? Is it current? <laughs> is it current? It has a slightly... If we, if we ever, ever want to add audio to our uh, to our theme... You know, while it goes, what's in Marco's mouth? And just him in the back going, is it current? Is it current? <laughs> I want to think it would be a great part. Um, oh, man. Spoiler it's, alert. <laughs> okay, it's, it's and a... And have currants on the show now. And it has a little bit of a mm, sour or tart tang to it. So that's why I'm thinking mm. current, but you would have... You would have been excited when I, I said I would have been excited it. Yeah, already. so it's That's not right. it's not it's not fig but it has a fig like quality um it is a fruit of some sort that's dried it's going to be brown in color it's going to be um there's little seeds in it. That's why I thought fig, but it's not fig either. Um so I'm going to say it is a what else do you dry? Um you also dry uh, sometimes I try to rush him, but sometimes he's got the answer right in this last final, like, right, la, right, la, right, la, right. La, just rubbish coming out of his mouth. And then he goes, wait a minute, is it a yeah. piece of acorn squash? I go, oh, my God, you got just it. think about it, Marco. Just okay. let it roll around. <laughs> okay. By the way, I'm amazed at this because it doesn't seem, I don't know what it is, but it doesn't seem like it would be that complicated to figure out. Oh, well, thank you. That makes me feel better. <laughs> um, but I probably wouldn't know what it is. Either. Bill... Assisting in mocking you without his own <laughs> knowledge. Without mocking him. Without mocking his own just knowledge. Like, to look at it, you think, oh, he's going to know what this is right away. But yeah. then it must just What's not taste thing? like... It's not a sea buckthorn berry, that's for sure. It is It is goji berry. That's Unbelievable! What... Did I get it? Did I get it? Did I get it? Did I get it? Yep. I got it. Oh, my God. I got it. I got it. I can't believe it. Why do you string me oh, along I didn't. that long? I didn't because I thought... I'm like, it's not a sea buckthorn berry, but it's similar... In I love it. I love that it took you all that. I know this guy's going to I don't know where. Did you cut up a fig bear. into pieces? I'm like he's off track. Oh my I god! I can't believe I got it. This is the second week in a row. This second is podcast in a row. That this is crazy. I'm getting better. I feel like Sally Field when she got. You her look Oscar. like right now. You look like when Captain Phillips gets rescued. You're, yeah. you're so stressed out. This stresses me out a lot. I don't love this segment. He came up with it. So much anxiety. He puts his fingers in my mouth it's it, i never know what's coming in there and it's just it's just listen marco if you want to have these successful 15 podcasts that you have there's oh, a few man. concessions you're gonna have <laughs> listen, to make I'm, but i have to he say i'm so I, I'm, ha- living. I'm happy for the week if i get it right like it makes my whole week better i can't believe i got it and the last thing out of your the last, mouth and it was sea buckthorn berry that got me there which is Thorn weird berry. bill and i looked at each other like oh yeah it's <laughs> not that thing whatever the hell that is <laughs> I don't know what the hell that Come is. on. Oh, no. It's a berry that grows by the ocean in parts of Gaspé, I think, and it's really orange in color and they'll use it in beauty products. And I think there is a paper uh covering oh, much like you're a you're talking like a ground cherry or like a something like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, gooseberry. Yeah, something, something like that. Yeah. Okay. So, so right. sea buckthorn berry. Mm-hmm. That's not what that was. This was a goji berry. Do you want to tell us what a goji berry is before we uh, sign up? A goji berry very very healthy in the last uh, I would say 10 years in North America. We've heard a lot about this like a Acai berries and goji berries. Now, I've never seen an acai, but goji berries come dried. I've had this in uh, in tea. 
You oh, can really? have it in tea, and then it sort of, you know, inflates, as you can imagine. Can you, so you can reco- water. reconstitute this. Re- reconstitute it, so then it's a nice, so it's like eating, a, as you said, a cranberry or raisin uh-huh. at the end, at the bottom of your tea. But it has very, very healthful properties. I put it in smoothies on a regular basis, uh, a lot of vitamin C, a lot of other vitamins that I don't have offhand, but it's uh, Can you get it at very, just very any grocery store? Very expensive, though, but you can get it on almost uh, any health food store. Okay. Mm, yeah. Well, where do you get it? Because remember when I had the problem with um, cloves and you're like, you went to the wrong place to get it? Sure. So okay. I will go to either Whole Foods, okay. which is sort of, I've mentioned that one first because a lot sure. of people will know of Whole Foods, but then in Toronto, there's a place called the Sweet Potato. Yes. I can go there, and there's a place called Healthy Planet. I can that's where you go. And okay. I usually look for when is it on sale? Okay. I'm like, I don't need this that yeah, badly. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Right? Uh, because, yeah, sometimes it's like 35 bucks for a bag. Okay. But it can also yeah. stick around for a while. It can stick around a long for while. a while. Yeah. 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 Wow. Good so happy. You. So happy. So proud of you. I want to mention that I'm still dreaming about the sourdough bread from Maticchioni that you oh, brought last week. Uh, You'll maybe, dream about it for another week minimum because I am as well. Uh, maybe we can get those guys in. Yeah. And, and, or we go there. I'm so and, happy yeah. you're pleased. Oh. Part of me never knows what his reaction is going to be, Bill. Sometimes I, ugh, I've had better sour. Okay, These all right. guys think that's sour. That's not, you know, who knows what experience I, he's I sound like. like a bitch on this show. The way both of you describe me, I sound like <laughs> Don't look at me. A little, <laughs> little bit. <laughs> okay, fair enough. But I sound like the most complaining no, little. Fine. Okay. This is why this works. Right. I will say I connected with you guys. <laughs> it's my moment to go, no, but instead I go, this the is The first time works. on your show when you mentioned how much you both hate buffets, I really connected with the uh, show because oh, I can never find anyone else who hates buffets as much as I do. So, so. Well, I worked uh, there. I worked at a buffet for a year and yeah. I was like, this is wrong on yeah, so many it's levels. Wrong. And one of the best buffets I ever saw okay. was actually a place called Fogo de Chao, which is another chain, but it was in Chicago. This was many years yes. ago. The salad buffet that you go to to accompany your steak yep. was unbelievable, mm. and I was the, I was like, am I am I good with buffets again? This is really no, because salad is something that is not lessened in quality by being served in a buffet style. Yes. I would agree a hundred percent with that the best statement. Salad buffet. Yeah, right. absolutely. I would also agree with everything that you mentioned about film on this particular podcast. Oh, yeah. thank you. Bill, <laughs> thank you so well, much I, for. Doing. I'm super honored to be the first guest. I was yeah. thrilled when you actually said yes to my pitch because I thought he might not want to do it. It might just be a you guys thing. If anything, it's you just know? a space consideration, but you uh, yeah. right. you were underneath No, I'll the... bring friends next time. We'll yeah. figure it out. We'll put them back <laughs> in there in the corner. Uh, no, but I was very, very Who's happy to do it. Who's on Marco's and... lap? <laughs> <laughs> Who's in Marco's mouth? Very, oh uh, but, uh, yeah, no, and, uh, and uh, you know, Marco has also been on my show. He's been on an episode of my Criterions on yeah. covering uh, Una Giornata Particolare Loved by... It, yeah. uh, I taught a scola, and he's going to be on my episode on Rome Open City if uh, Lucy gets her act together anytime Lucy, soon. Lucy, I know Lucy. she listens to this podcast. Lucy, you got a lot of explaining to do. Who is this Lucy? Is she, she is someone who's creating a podcast in New York City who yeah. happens to be a friend of mine who I connected with, Bill, yeah. and uh, she's a pretty much the person I would say who's the, the biggest cool authority cool in chick. Italian yeah. Italian cinema. Okay. So. Yeah. I think that that deserved mentioning. Of yeah. course it did. Of you course. You two were talking about Lucy like everybody yeah. knows. I was like, <laughs> well, maybe I should know. And, uh, you know I'm so yeah, so Marco will be on the episode on Rome Up in City as Which well. Which means but... Ali has to be on an episode. So I'm, I'm, I hope I'm, he will. I'm, 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 I'd be very honored. I'm forcing his very hand. I'm forcing, yeah. Whether he wants to or not now, <laughs> he's committed. What do I got to do Italian-wise to be on this? What do I want Nothing. Do? Nothing. No. No. Perfect. Greek-wise, we got to figure things out here. All right. Well, thank you for listening, folks. If you have an idea for one of these special shows where we have a guest, a chef, a person who can talk about food. In this case, we had Bill and Taniu. Did I get that right? Ah, bravo. Oh, finally. Bravo, bravo. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I guess. Yeah, let's say goodbye. Yeah, let's I say goodbye. Is, is it time? It's time. Have we, have we breathed enough of our own air in this so. uh, booth? <laughs> I'm Ali Hassan. This is Marco T- Timpano. This is Bill Antinui. Uh, until we eat again. <laughs> We hope you got your fill of Eat and Drink with Ali Hassan and Marco Timpano. Follow them on Instagram and Twitter at Podcast Eat Drink. Email them your cocktail and food suggestions to podcasteatdrink at gmail.com. Until the next episode, bottoms up. <laughs> <laughs>